what we're trying to accomplish today is talking about how new revenue comes through something as simple as inventory optimization. That's why we named this Power Hour Realizing New Revenue Through Inventory Optimization because as we move into the promised land of cross-platform inventory optimization, there are a lot of tricks that experts and innovators such as Jeff and Sky Media have done that we want to give you a little bit of insights to because in the promised land of inventory optimization, there is a pot of money at that end of the rainbow. We've designed this webinar so it's not just for folks who are part of the ad management ecosystem. Why? Because every single person now in any media operation is actually part of the advertising ecosystem. All media organizations that sell advertising or even work with branding and promotions need to obtain maximum value from airtime inventory. And this, as we all know, as we expand, expand platforms, is becoming more and more complicated. We need to figure out how to get the highest amount of revenue with the least amount of commercial airtime. And that's something that our colleague, our client, and my good friend Jeff Eels has been able to do with Sky Media. So we're going to pick his brain and get some insights from him. So Jeff, say hi to everyone first so we make sure that we can hear you too. Hi, here I am sitting in London and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Brilliant. At least I think for 4 o'clock, that means you've already had tea, so we assume that you are highly caffeinated and ready to go. I've had my two and two double sandwiches already, Sarah. Perfect. Before we get started, though, um, because you know, Jeff, I've got a ton of questions for you. I want to just give our audience here a background on why the topic is so critical at this point in technology. And it really is based on all of the different delivery platforms that we have. Every single one of us in media knows that what do viewers want now? The content on any device at the time they want that they have the rights to view. That is where we now have more inventory, but a huge pressure to squeeze the maximum value across all of those platforms as we're even learning how advertising can actually work on the mobile device with VOD across any type of digital video stream. To do this, the tools are changing. Our systems are changing. And that's where now what we do with our linear platforms, traditional television that still has the bulk of the revenue, we've optimized that and now we're working on how do we optimize the multi-device digital delivery mechanisms as well. And with folks in the United States, this is going to become even more apparent as the ATSC 3.0 standard rolls out. So the bottom line is the goal of us as content providers has to be the right people see the right content at the right time, and we get the advertisers lined up with all that so that we can make more money. The devil's in the details. So before we actually get started, Jeff, I'm going to do a speed round game with you. We're going to see how quickly, and I know that's a challenge for you being quick, um, we can actually get some Ad Speak 101 definitions. So okay. I'm going to ask for you to, to kind of align and ground the audience with what these things mean in like 10 words or less. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Ad audience. So an ad audience now, um, it's going to be more than 10 words, Sarah, but an, an audience now has just tra traditionally changed from um, men, women, kids to any collection of uh, any collection or cluster of people that you wish to name that you believe has value. So it can be all of the, um, all of the homes in Birmingham with a house uh, that's worth greater than a million pounds. So an audience is literally those people that you wish to you wish to get you wish to put an ad in front of. Awesome linear advertising. Uh, linear advertising uh, is good old fashioned uh, CBS, ITV, um, Channel Four, BBC. Except of course BBC doesn't have to have ads in that have um, center breaks and end breaks 
and are regulated by the amount of time that um, is a maximum for each particular channel every single day. So we call that traditional television. So now tell me, how do you define non-linear advertising? Non-linear, we say, is um, people accessing content via either a different device or at uh, 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 their time. So if linear is everyone doing the same thing at the same time, non-linear is effectively everyone doing something different at the same time. So everybody okay. watches their version, they, what they want to watch, and we have to show ads to them when they want to watch and the um, and make sure that that particular viewing experience is as good if not better than the linear experience okay we're not being too speedy so let's see if we can try addressable i'm giving you hard ones here jeff well addressable uh, we we consider addressable to be um uh, effectively a subset of the traditional broad audiences of men women and uh, children so addressable would be we have identified as best we can that you are in a a household or a person is in a particular cluster and and if we can therefore ad advertise to that particular cluster then how do you define impression uh, an impression is one is an ad server telling us that one ad has gone out to one device and if we look at the screen here, spot, you still feel that spot is that traditional definition of an, a time slot that's going to have an ad, traditionally 30 seconds, but now multiple times in, in kind of how much it plays based on where we are in the world. You so, still get yeah. with that definition? Yes. So a spot to, uh, to a viewer is exactly the same whether it's in a piece of um, uh, and a piece of non-linear content or in a piece of linear content. So we consider that a spot can be one person, you know, 10,000 people watching a piece of linear, a 30-second ad in a piece of linear content, or one person simply seeing a TV spot in the middle of a program that they selected. So a spot can actually, clearly, it's a, it, it can transition from from linear to non-linear. There's quite a lot of expressions here that don't cross the don't cross the patch between traditional and and um, uh, new. Uh, but that would, although a spot clearly is. So a, if we refer to a spot, it's effectively a 30-second ad going okay. out, going out once. And then impact reach. So what's the um, the difference between the two? So an in, an impact for as far as Again, as far as we're concerned, is an, in, an impact is a measure of a pan is a panel measure. So an impact would be um, you would take if five thousand people and eleven five thousand homes, eleven and a half thousand people in the UK have been selected on a TV audience panel to be repre a representative sample of the UK, and one person one person watches that one person could generate up to. 13,000 impacts. So an impact is effectively one person watching once, but derived from a panel. And although there are a lot of definitions around CPM, give us your quick speed definition of how Sky Media uses CPM. It's it, This is, to all intents and purposes, we think pretty global. So it's cost per, cost per, um, cost per million. So, so as far as we're concerned, um, it is simply the cost um, the cost divided by the total thousands that have been delivered. Okay, so that was our Ad Speak 101. Uh, I one think of, one of the things yeah. you did well. I would uh, give you a prize. Very important. So, reach is probably the single most we're finding probably the most single most important um, item down on there, which is um, as um, as we know people's audio, uh, people's viewing is changing. Um, defining what the reach is of that audience is now becoming very difficult, if not impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So, um, so in other words, if you've got a um, if you've got linear television going out on a mobile device that isn't covered by traditional TV audience measurement, um, what is that extended reach? How much reach do you get from that? We can work out reach on a panel. We can work out reach on impressions, which is one-to-one -one based, but it's very difficult at the moment to work out the two together 
to say what is the total reach of any one particular channel or platform. Well, but I think that that speaks to kind of the, the challenge that we have with the way that media companies have been buying and selling and measuring in what was considered traditional linear advertising versus all of this new stuff. Right, And that's why the, the 101 definitions was so important. So as you just spoke about how reach is complicated in the new model, how has ad sales from Sky Media's perspective changed since you've been able to move more towards audience and impression-based selling? So we moved about, it was about, about 15 years ago, the, the uh, UK market moved to uh, GPR selling, which is um, guaranteed, uh, guaranteed ratings. So this effectively means that even though you can pick specific programs, your target is in fact a total number of ratings across a certain period of time. And by doing that, you are literally changing from saying these, from just picking programs to get to an audience, to simply saying that audience is what I'm trying to get, and we use a system to actually point towards that audience, not necessarily pointing it towards a program. By doing that, in virtually all impression-based um, uh, impression um, campaigns are based on, um, based on who. So you're based on who do we think is at the end of the device. If we think Jeff is at the end of the device, then we'll play him a, we'll play him a banking ad or a mortgage ad or we'll play him a, um, a very high specification car ad uh, and when you actually look in, into the future wouldn't it be useful or we think it's going to be useful if not absolutely vital to be able to sell linear and non-linear together to get those to get those two audiences or the same audiences merged under one um, one target uh, that's the challenge for the future and if you don't have the linear if you don't have linear in place to be able to do that you can't add apples to pears. So we need to try to get two varieties of apples. And so when, when we look at how Sky has done that, I assume that after there was some kicking and screaming from the sales organization, they saw that if they had the right tools, they would be able to go sell apples and pears as, as one campaign if I'm going to take your fruit analogy. Is that a yeah. fair statement? Yes. So the first apple and pear was the fact that, that particularly for, for a lot of organizations, we have um, very, very nice apples um, in, the, in, in the shape of Premier League football. And some nice flavor, but different type of apples uh, for the rest of the ball company. Um, all the apples, of course, Sarah, taste brilliant, but, it's, but, some, but some might be um, better than, uh, or more favorable than others. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to actually put those together so that we're not sell it, we're selling our premium together with our less premium. And that is what we have managed to do with the agencies in the UK, which is to say, can we control across one particular campaign? Can we control the really, all the different varieties that we sell of premium, um, kind of got, if you like, gold, silver, and bronze type airtime. Well, but to, to make that work for the agencies, you had to convince them that you understood what efficiency is. So, so define what efficiency is because that's the difference between you being able to automatically manage Premier League and, as you called it, the less premier opportunities you had across platforms. So, so define efficiency and talk about automation for systems and how that then became valuable to your sales team and your advertisers. So the first part of the chain was, can we actually deliver what we say we can deliver? And so that means by having a auto book process together with um, specific spot buying can we get, can we agree and make sure that if we agree we're going to deliver um, 1,500 ratings that we actually do? Um, and that took some time, but I think we've got to a stage now where agencies are pretty comfortable to believe that if we say we're going to hit a target, we actually do. And to demonstrate that we do, we give them regular updates. Some agencies will get a report to the first thing every every morning coming out of um, uh, Landmark will, uh, will issue a 
defined report to a defined agency that actually has on it um, red, uh, red, green, and amber um, warning lights to say this this um, this campaign's green, so that's good. This one's got some little bit of red on it, so you double click on the red spot, and it tells you that daytime next third next week is a little bit light. And the interesting thing is because we do that, we know that anyway, so we've probably got to it before the agency has. But it's letting the agency see what we're doing and being as transparent as we can be. And, and just to clarify for the audience, when you talked about Landmark being a system that's, that's measuring some of that, that's your airtime sales system. Absolutely. So the airtime okay. system does all of this. It does, it loads, we, we load ratings automatically, we send as runs to the measurement service automatically, and after we've loaded ratings, we recalculate all the, pre, all the predictions, autom pretty much the total inventory automatically clearly, there are games like Man, Man U versus Chelsea and the big games that, that, that are very particular. And so you need a person to do that. And so you can, the, the system is written to say, don't, don't go near premiership football because that needs to be manually, manually predicted because that's the sensible thing to do. But the vast majority of the system is automated. So where are you actually selling impressions and finding your audience across your multiple platforms and inventory types? Because you're talking about a pretty important thing, Premier League, but I'm assuming your viewers are watching it on Sky Go, they're watching it actually on, on the satellite channel. So help me know, where, where all is audience and impression being sold in Sky Media? So in... Um so on for Premiership football, Premiership football is viewed um, uh, at a very high rate. Um, around we get we get probably a 15, 15 sometimes twenty percent increase in viewing through the mobile platform. Um, so traditionally, we might get say two million people watching uh, watching uh, on their set-top boxes at home, and we can see um, five hundred thousand um, watching it on their mobile phones. Um, quite interestingly, though, of course, the traditional measurement system doesn't let us measure that extra 500,000. So we've developed a system to enable us to dynamically change the ads um, within the within those breaks on SkyGo Linear, and that's how we can sell those impressions, those new impressions, together with the um, impressions that you, or sorry, the impacts that you would get on linear television from the same spot. Does that make sense? <laughs> I, I think it does, but I want to dive into that a little bit further, right? Because you just talked about how 15% of viewing is, is on mobile. Um, but are you well, using... Yeah, just, just, just for that particular program, okay? The, the, mm -hmm. viewing, the viewing to mobile is, a, is, is important, but it's a, lot, it's a lot less than that. But for football, not surprisingly, we get real spikes. Um, we think partially due to the fact that it may be it may be um, there's a there's a room in the house that's watching another TV, or it might be the the young lads or the young girls that are watching it on their iPads or on their Xboxes or on their Playstations, and so that's where we see we see real real unusual spikes when we get to football. Okay, so so it's not oh, clearly it's not 15 percent across the board, but there are real spikes. It's the same as Super Bowl. So imagine gets a massive spike at that time. But you are looking, regardless of if it's something as premier as, as football, um, you are actually trying to find that audience and selling an impression across your satellite mobile and your OTT platforms, correct? Correct. That's exactly what we do. So we identify for, we identify for um, set-top boxes. So if it's, a, if it's um, someone watching Sky Go on Xbox or PlayStation, we consider that quite clearly to be a household because it's a big TV in a large room, whereas clearly a mobile, a mobile um, device is much more likely to be a single person. So we tend, we, we tend to register that as a individual impression. So when it, it, when it comes to targeting then, how are you doing that to make sure that you find that young person that might be streaming on the iPad versus um, grandpa who's watching the match in another room on the big screen? So in the household, we don't. In the household, okay. 
we can only we can only make an inference on that and, and we tend not to because we could be wrong whereas if it's a um, clearly information the information we know about the, the we have an agreement with the customer as to um, what part of their customer data we can use to identify who they are we never share that with anybody um, because we're not allowed to we, we don't share any first party data with uh, any third parties but using that data you can um, as it within our own infrastructure because we're a subscriber a satellite and um, we're a satellite TV provider and therefore have subscribers and pay customers. From that, from that point, we actually do have a very rich database to enable us to work out who is who. But we, we, at this time, we tend to do it on household rather than, rather than specific device. Also, are, you, are you guaranteeing? the delivery of the impression and impact because I know that that's been a, a massive challenge and why some people still are saying nope we've got to stay with the good old-fashioned ad spot where I can actually have confirmation and verification uh, yes we've got um, this is this is different this is not the World Wide West this is a this is a mobile and and or a um, uh, uh, PlayStation or Xbox application, and there's no ch that if the ad plays, the ad will the ad will have the ad will have been played. Now, whether or not anybody's actually there or not, um, clearly we can only make a judgment as to whether they are or they aren't. But we definitely know in on the World Wide West, you're not even sure that the ad is in view, you're not sure that the audio is on, um, and you're not necessarily sure that anybody's there. In this instance, you definitely know the ad played. It ad played in total view on the screen because there's there's no other essence of doing that. Um, and so we believe, from that point of view, we're we're much further down the if you like transparency view and the ability to create a view that is genuine. So as far as we're concerned, an impression is an impression. It is definitely it is an ad played, and the the likelihood is that a person saw that ad. Then, then are you still having salespeople come in and saying, but I just have an advertiser that wants to buy a spot in a program, and this whole impression audience mumbo jumbo isn't working? Yes, we do. Um, and, and if they do, we are happy to, we are happy under certain circumstances to sell it to them at a certain price, of course. But it's not, it's, it's very, it's, for us, it's very rare. Um, and, and, go ahead. 90 plus, I would say 90, 95 plus percent of all our deals are, um, are based on guaranteed, on guaranteed, uh, on, on guarantees that are not to do with the program. So, make goods is something that we used as a way to track progress and make up progress in the good old-fashioned spot sales model. With impressions, you've already talked about being able to provide data directly to the advertiser and agency on the performance of the campaign. Are you still doing make goods? Are you still giving up inventory to fix problems? Um, in extreme circumstances, if we put the wrong ad out, um, clearly yes, but again, with the with um, the carrier system, we have those those incredibly rare that we put the wrong ad out at the uh, put the wrong ad out at, um, now. So so there are make goods if if we make if we if we make a a mess. But if you're saying are there make goods because someone thought it the the program was going to do 20 million and it only did 10, so um, the rate that was set for 20 million was clearly too high. No, we just we don't we we're not in that uh, arena at all because we've we've already agreed that the the target we're going to get to you is let's say twenty million and we'll give you the number of spots that gets the twenty million. So make goods in a um, uh, in a uh, impression based sorry in an impact based guaranteed ratings um, environment goes away. Is that because of the increased efficiency of automation? 
Yes. Is that what's helped? Okay, then speak to that. Help us help us know the magic behind how you've been able to eliminate things like make goods and get the the advertisers to move to this audience impression model. So if you if you continue to say if this goes back to what we talked about earlier, if if you can prove and if you can show that you um, it is possible in a in a trading market to over trade. So you might um, you might deal away more than you've actually got. Okay, um, in that in instance, no system will particularly help you. But if you do if you do manage it correctly, you can certainly enable the traders to go and go and trade to a level that enables you and the advertisers to win. Okay, so we get we I refer to it as a quart out of a pint pot. Okay, and if you can get a quart out of the pine pot by putting the right, again, the right ad to the right audience at the right time, then both the advertiser wins and we win because we lose, we use slightly less inventory, slightly less inventory to get to the same delivery. If you can keep showing month after month, week after week, that um, you are good enough to provide uh, um, those targets and get to those targets um, correctly, then it is, I, I promise you, there are some agencies that simply just believe us, not believe us, and they simply just leave it, effectively, leave it, leave it to us. I'm going to say leave it to us. They, they, they clearly check every day, um, but they're, they're confident that they're going to get the audience that we, um, that we say that we're going to get. And we do that in harmony with them. So you basically have kind of overcome what's well known as as the Google, Facebook, YouTube problem, right? Which is the, if, if I throw it out there, am I really getting what I need? And am I having brand safety so that my ad isn't showing up against some horribly non-aligned content? Is yes. that because of the systems that you've done? Well, it's, part, it's, it's partly due to that, but it's taking, it's taking the, the benefit or taking, the, the, um, uh, taking advantage, if you like, of the system that we have in the UK. In the UK, we agree, all broadcasters agree, to send their logs to the, uh, to the measurement service every single day. So we have, effectively, we have, a third, we have a third party or an industry third party. So again, in the UK, we have a joint industry committee that runs BARB and, uh, and, and that has the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 um, and Channel 5 and Sky uh, and the IPA, which is the agencies, all put into BARB. And BARB basically are the, uh, the arbiters of A, what the viewing levels are, and B, what was transmitted at that time. We have to send out as runs every single day as to exactly what spot aired when. And that then is available within eight days' time. That is available to the total market so everybody can see all the spots that went out. Now, in some markets, that's horrific. You think, well, hold on a minute, so Fox and Gamble can see all of Unilever spots that went out. And you say, well, yes. But the plus is the fact that everybody gets to see um, and gets to trust what the currency is. And so if you all trust what the currency is, then that trust can, can, can emulate and push into um, the way you trade. And so what is the currency? Talk about that because we've, we've used impression throughout this, and yet you're really actually selling audience. Yes, we are selling audience impacts. So, so all, all linear TV is traded off of a... Uh, off of uh, a minute by a minute by minute value issued by Barb every single day to the entire industry against the spots that were transmitted for every single channel at the at the times during the breaks they were transmitted. That means everybody can see, provided of course that you are a that you have the license um, uh, the the license to look at Barb data because it can't. You do have to pay that through BARB, which is part of the funding mechanism to, of the system. But if you do that, then you can see every single ad that was transmitted by every single broadcaster every day and the level to which viewing was, um, the level of the viewing that was traded or, or was uh, the, uh, the level of the viewing that was recorded. So by doing that, you have a stable currency between the broadcasters and the advertisers and the agencies and 
uh, and to all intents and purposes, you you all believe that that is as close as number as correct as you can get. That enables you to be able to say, I, uh, I tell you what, if you need to get 100 ratings, we will deliver 100 ratings, and we will go for 100 ratings to men 1634s. Does that make sense? That there's countries that it work. does because that's that's the confidence right that's the trust that you've built on how you're measuring it but as you're selling if if memory serves you're selling on audience and you've got about 25 different audiences that you're going to the advertiser and saying you know I'm going to deliver that's the currency and the measurement that we have as an industry Yes. But Sky has differentiated with those audiences. How did you pick 25 audiences and, and how are you optimizing that because that's truly where you're getting premium price? Yes, so it's a combination, of the audience is a combination of what we believe the demand is and what we think the supply is. So clearly you wouldn't choose adults if, you, if you're showing predominantly kids' programs. Okay, so so our audience, our, our, our specific audiences for us, because of the Sky platform and the football, will tend to be upmarket, upmarket men and women. Um, so men, uh, men, sixteen thirty four is the predominant audience for football, and ABC One men tend to be the predominant audience for rugby. Okay, so so by doing that, you therefore work out what your audience levels are, and you know or how you can trade to the. Uh, to the agencies, but the agencies clearly will come in and say, hold on a minute, we, we'd quite like to buy against this audience. How, what price will you sell us this audience for? So um, most of the time that audience is available or those 25 audiences are available to, to the agencies as they require them. And some of this targeting and, and the data you have on the audiences is because of your proprietary AdSmart system. Um, that's that's now we've gone to a step different, Sarah. So so we just the, what we talked about is traditional television against traditional TV audiences. Okay. So mm -hmm. if, however, you take the customer information that you've got that we have about each customer, and as you say, we can blind match some of them through through um, uh, through a uh, a blind sorry a blind matching service, we can get, we can get to information. Um, similar to say, what the potential the value of the house the subscriber is living in, um, the sort of lifestyle choices they make. So if you, we can get to the, um, uh, we can get to, golly, the word's gone completely out of my head beginning with M, it'll come to me, um, not, not my desk, not, um, it'll, it's gone, I'll, it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, but we, you, can, you can create different clusters of different audience sets to enable you to target specifically against that. So we are able through AdSmart to send different, to, to identify households that are in a particular cluster. Um, we can send ads for that particular campaign to, uh, to the box, and we can send a, um, a, an instruction within the live stream at any point within an ad break to um, tell an ad on the set-top box to overlay the linear ad that's being shown at the time. So it's kind of, it is absolutely super addressable television. So now that we talk about super addressable television, let's go back to the, the title of the webinar, right, which is yeah. through inventory optimization. Yeah. There, it, it, you and I have worked together for a long time, right? Yeah. And I think that you're one of the pioneers in, in efficiency and optimization. What are the systems and, and how are you leveraging impression and audience in an optimization engine? Okay, Speak so to the, the audience about that process. So we, we, tr we transact about 38 million spots a year. And so um, in order to not have an entire building full of people that are selling every single spot, we have to, we have to automate. And part of that, autom uh, that or, or the, or, um, uh, automation has been the um, autobook engine that's provided within Landmark. Um, it not only books um, something like uh, 3 million spots in about an hour and a half, which would take a heck of a lot of people to do, um, it, it also intelligently slots them. So it takes the 25, it takes the 25 audiences, 
It takes all of the campaigns that are targeted to any one of those audiences, and it makes sure it puts the right spot for the right audience in at the right time. And, uh, and if you can do that, that, that without doubt optimizes your demand against your supply. So that means that you can probably you can always take a little bit more a little more demand against the supply that you have because you make the supply work harder. So um, we do that about six weeks before transmission for one particular for any one month ahead of us. But then not only do not not only because the engine is so fast, we can actually optimize um, and run it pretty much every single day. For the, for the next day. So we have two processes, one that lays down the schedule for the entire month, and the other that the schedule that effectively cleans up each day just prior to transmission. And what it does is we, we, um, we are able to load, the, load new ratings or actual ratings, um, uh, we load actual ratings into the system every single day. Those actual ratings, as I said, are then predicted forward. We then look at the the following day. We realise that some of the some of the audiences well some of the audiences will have changed for each particular spot, and therefore something that we thought was good is now not good. The system automatically um, uh, selects those not so good spots anymore, deletes them, and we rebook them. So we are constantly we whatever you want to call it, you can call it iteration, you can call it defragging, you can call it. You can call it constantly optimizing, but not only do we optimize for a whole month, we constantly optimize each day. We refer to it as the washing machine um, that kind of washes the old stuff out and puts the new stuff back in better. Um, that can make millions, can make millions of pounds in a, in a substantial market and does, or not millions of pounds, it, it creates millions, millions of value. Okay, it basically enables the salespeople to go out and you have more airtime to sell because you've managed to get um, the airtime you've sold into the right. So in essence, and I love the washing machine, right, because it's that constant kind of cleaning up your schedule, right, yeah. and cleaning up the inventory utilization. Are, are you removing inventory or spots or, or, or how, what? Yes, we are removing spots each each day. We remove spots. We replace them with uh, we replace them in a better place, and then the following morning we'll resend the schedules to the agencies. And and bottom line, how is this affecting revenue then? Uh, well, um, you said millions. Uh, I did. So not surprisingly, Sarah, I'll be quite cute about exactly what the numbers are, um, but. Um, if I can tell you that um, certainly when we implemented when we implemented so I started in Sky about golly in almost to the day about ten years ago um, seven years ago we implemented landmark we were making three hundred million pounds a year uh, this year we'll make about one point three billion um, that clearly hasn't come entirely from the same inventory. But that has it, the the reason we've been able to increase in new media partners, add new channels, is simply because we have a well, not simply. It is it is one of the pieces is because we're able to add channels quickly. We're able to add channels without adding without adding huge numbers of uh, people in operations to do it. Um, we we probably added about ten to fifteen percent um, um, uh, of, the, of the workforce during that time that we've increased by about four times. So I think that kind of just tells its own story. Um, how much money you make is clearly based on how well your salespeople are. But I'm, I'm, I'm an operations guy. I get given the problem of making sure that we, we automate as much as possible so the people we've got, um, their time is used uh, as well as it possibly can be. Um, and we make sure that we are totally compliant within a, I mean, the UK is one of the highest regulated um, uh, um, uh, broadcasting areas in in the world, I believe. So we have to make sure that again the right ad goes in the right place for regulatory purposes, as well as for making sure that it's making us money. So we have two of those things, and Landmark lets us do both of those, and Autobook adheres to all of those rules. So we have kind of a what we think is a is a win-win. And when we get new ratings in, we can run it again. 
and we have an agreement with the agencies to enable us to do that. I'm quite, quite pleased. Well, and so, so to kind of boil it back down, right? First, you had to change the sales process and, yeah. and convince the sales team and the agencies and the advertisers to move to impression. So we had a single currency across platforms. That was yeah. almost like step one. Yeah, correct. Okay. Then single. step two step was, two. go ahead. So step two was, was, as you say, trust was, was getting the buyer and seller to be able to trust that when they've done a deal that we, we as a broadcaster will adhere to it and, and can deliver the deal that we've said we can and prove that we can by good and timely reports um, every day, every other day. Um, and doing uh, and making sure that they see uh, what we're doing and and that's really about also getting people to buy into the concept that something like an automated engine or algorithm working on inventory management is is not only doable but it's actually going to be a win-win yes, for the agency and for sky media right absolutely absolutely and and to a certain extent also you know, in the future, making us look, you know, a little bit like, you know, we, we know that supposedly buying uh, buying digitally is very, I'm going to use the word easy, I'm not sure it is, but um, uh, in a world where you can go onto a programmatic platform, buy some digital advertising um, targeted at people in London, and then um, upload your piece of creative and then get results back within hours, um, makes TV look a bit clunky. Um, so from that point of view, we wanted to, we want, we genuinely wanted to be, you know, um, we or, and think we need to be easy to buy, um, uh, transparent to trade, and uh, and show that there's undoubtedly this is the bit that's being I think possibly lost over the last couple of years. In in our in not surprising in our view, TV advertising is the most powerful medium in the world. And you know, is still is by a mile. So we need to make it. We need to keep proving it. Well, and and that's where it it really is the kind of like you you don't want to get lost in a sea of other impression campaigns or sales because Sky Media isn't just another publisher. You're Sky Media with the targeting and the audience and the measurement and the consistency and the brand safety. Yes, so so addressable is again, you know, digital or or, or um, uh, well, uh, the, you know, the web can definitely deliver hyper hyper addressability, um, as we as we know, or so we so we believe, um, and so clearly that was on the agenda for agencies saying you no know, television tends to be quite wasteful and tends to be quite difficult, and so we're trying to take those out. And particularly when there's going to be more regulation coming up, there's going to be, uh, if there is more targeting, we need to be careful about the regulation. But we need to be, we need to move with the times. We need to move with what the advertisers want. The advertisers want to be able to change copy quickly. They want to be able to change the message differently. And they need, they need to know what's happened after, you know, as soon after it's happened as possible. And it needs to be as accurate as we can get it. And, and and in some in some parts of the TV industry, we're not we we don't hit all those buttons, so we've got to. So that's what we've been trying to do, trying to make TV as as kind of as tradable as we can with impression-based television. So that's your crystal ball, becoming yeah. more like digital, but maintaining the the premium and frankly the premier access to viewers that Sky Media can deliver. Yes. Absolutely. So you've got the best of television and the best of the and the best of the flexibility of the platform. So it's another win. So we can deliver the same kind of audiences that the Googles and the Facebooks can. Um, that's what we're trying to. That's what we're trying to do within 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 reason. Certainly moving away from broad audiences. Mm -hmm. so that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what addressable is all about. And there's no question that um, you know AdSmart has been extremely successful in bringing in very different kind of advertisers into the mix. So, you know, we've had McLaren. So McLaren sell cars at a quarter of a million pounds each. I think it's the only time that the that I know where the where the product is worth more than the campaign. 
Um, so yet yeah, we've also had Newcastle taxis. Newcastle taxis is a you know is a very successful small for small taxi firm. Guess what? In Newcastle, and and it's um uh, it's it's again bought some. It's been able to buy AdSmart. Um, has mean, meant that you can put together a pretty, you know, pretty good HD ad um, with high quality, with high quality, um, uh, high quality content around. So with with a with a, it's a high quality ad now, so it looks pretty good. Um, it, you can use animatics, you can use whatever you like, but it's not going to cost you a million pounds to make an ad, and it's not now going to cost you a million pounds to show. So. It's so television is now accessible by you know very you know large small businesses within within different areas of the, the country or the world. So that's what we managed to do. Well, I think this is really exciting, right? Because now we're not only talking about how you're increasing revenue through, frankly, better utilization of, of automation and systems and a new currency, but you're now going and and targeting and being able to bring new non-traditional advertisers into the fold. Now yes. that's that's pretty exciting. Absolutely. So that was the intention. As far as we're concerned, addressable television is predominantly to enable new advertisers to come onto the platform. And something like 70% of all of the uh, ad smart advertisers are new to TV. Uh, or new that's to brilliant. That's okay. brilliant. That's brilliant. And it means that and, and they and they they return you know we get them we get them coming back um, uh, very well as well so it is it's it, it is exciting and it's a, certainly a you know it's a new way to get your ad into into the into the lounge of people you know in the UK and and actually um, in Ireland and in Italy now because we've we've been able to um, uh, put the service out in Italy and in Ireland just recently so it's certainly got it's certainly the it's 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 part of the future well why don't we pause for two seconds um because this has just been so much insight and expertise so thank you i'm wondering um don if we have some questions from the audience that we could plug in at this time yes we have a few questions that have come in and just a reminder you can enter text questions at any time and we'll try to get those all answered for you uh, so the first question is so is there still focus on the networks do his avatar jeff's advertisers rely only on impressions in the gate where the ad is served uh just just say that again is that written down any just say it again Dawn. Yes. So is there still a focus on the networks? Do your advertisers rely only on the impressions and the and the gate where the ad is served? Okay, so I think I know what they are. So so there definitely is some move to uh, to not rely entirely on the ad impression. So yes, we we are getting asked about could there be a third party a third party measurement service like the Barbs and the Nielsen's that are that are measuring the impressions rather than a broadcaster impression um, being um, being believed. So the answer to that is yes. Um, uh, Barb are currently working on a called Dovetail, which is measuring mobile uh, viewing, um, and we're looking at whether or not that can be those whether that can be fused with the traditional television panel so to get a different to get a different currency. However, that's it's, we, we've not agreed that we're going to go to a currency yet. We're going to a measure first. So, uh, but we have got questions about whether you use whether you use moat, uh, whether you use those sorts of um, uh, those sorts of partners or software suppliers that can give an independent measure. Yes, the likelihood is that that looks like that is the way it's going to go, and I think that would be pretty good. It would be. It would be good if it if it was. We would we would applaud that. Well, and and what I also heard you say, Jeff, earlier, and and we've seen this with other clients around the world, is even though ninety five percent of the inventory moves towards impression based and audience um, based uh, buying and selling, 
that there are still some holdout advertisers that want to buy a spot against a network or against a program or against a time frame within um, the schedule or within the program itself and that you've been able to say, okay, yep, we can do that for a premium. Yes, that's always that you would think that's going to carry on for, you know, a great deal of time. You know, this live television is, is, is alive and kicking. And and um, uh, and that's you know good good old fashioned linear TV in very high highly demanded programs works we know works very very well so it's about how you integrate all the other pieces not how you how you kind of disintegrate it so yes that you you kind of go with you kind of um, uh, go with what the requirements are but we're trying as hard as we can to you know to make one voice you know can we. Can we invoice once? Can we agree what a total is? Can we agree electronically? Uh, I mean, the, the carrier platform basically takes 90% of all the bookings going into Landmark are placed there by agencies typing in, typing in their requirements or uploading their requirements into the carrier front end, which goes, goes via a salesperson into and automatically into Landmark. And that's and that's 100% of group head. It's 100% of, um, of publicists. You know, the, the 10% we don't have is the 90% of the small small clients that that don't that um, don't buy airtime from us on a regular basis. But hopefully, within a year, two years, that all TV bookings in Tiamat will be placed in by a buyer somewhere on the web uh, on the web through uh, through a, the carrier front end. That would be great. You know, we've got to try and get manual bookings out of the system. That's all. Well, and, and, and pause on that because I think another question that came through was you've spoken a lot about how measurement has to be foundational to the currency, right, yeah. which is you, you've got to have someone like a barb, which is the measurement system in the U.K., um, yeah. be able to create that validation. Um, when you now have moved into Germany and Italy, what type of measurement systems are you now coming across and how are you starting to work with those in your inventory optimization process? That's a really good question because, because in Germany, the um, a, uh, 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 ABS are effectively the, the barb over there and GFK are the Cantar, their providers, and in, in Germany, the, the GFK code, as they call it, is an absolutely crucial piece of the trading currency. If you don't trade by GFK code, you effectively don't sell airtime. So in, in, in Germany, it's kind of absolutely joined at the hip um, between the two systems. However, they don't, they don't go quite that, the, the next step, by, by actually producing logs and have, making it transparent. They haven't done that yet. Perhaps they, perhaps they should. Um, in Italy, they do it a different way where the measurement system is through Avitel. And, um, but I don't, this is where you're extending my, my, I'm only just learning myself about how some of this works, Sarah. So if I've got this a little bit wrong, I do apologize. But um, log, well, log, it, it, logs are it, not it's, the Italian market. They're done off audio matching. Um, and it's done almost entirely independently of the broadcaster. So, so, so some, 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 some countries don't like using the logs because it's still coming from the broadcaster. You know, they prefer to, they prefer to log it um, completely independently. I, I'm personally not in, entirely in, in, I don't understand that's a bit of a sledgehammer, crack and walnut. But, but we are trying to move those you know we would quite like and, and and see that some of those countries are moving are moving the same way even though we have different systems to do it well and i think what's interesting based on on the states and other global markets that rely heavily on nielsen uh to see how comscore uh, to see how Rentrack um, and, and their use of even data points from uh, set-top boxes with MVPDs or other global media providers like a Sky, now a Fox, or a Scripps, or any of those with the set-top box data, it, it, it almost is like now the measurement systems are really starting to become complex, almost Rubik's Cubes, that 1980s game, right, where you, you have so many different sides that you're trying to mix and match to get to that targeting. 
Yes, absolutely. And, and it's those it's those that we need to be, you know, we, we need to lead the discussion, we need to set the we need to try and set the agenda of what the requirements of the advertisers are. And um, uh, uh, and if you're going, you know, if you're going to do it, we, we always take the take the analogy of a of a, a dollar bill isn't worth a dollar. It's only worth a dollar because we all agree it is. And um, and we've got to try to get to that point. If we can get to that point, we then have a we then have a mechanism by which we can trade. And we're not we're not quite there yet. Uh, and and uh, there's two things that I always have in my mind. One, uh, and they're completely opposite, and I think they're completely right. I would say that, wouldn't I? One is I'm incredibly frustrated at the speed at which we're going, and the other one is I'm, in, I'm absolutely amazed how far we've gone. I mean, some of the well, it, 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 that's classic, Jeff. Right. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and throw in the contradiction as the final comment. No. Um, but but I do think you're right, and and I can't thank you enough, Jeff, for sharing your insights about how, frankly, you moved the market and and really took the leadership with Sky Media towards this new advertising ecosystem and and really creating that confidence with internal to Sky Media that they could make the change, but then also external with the advertisers and the agency and the third parties to be part of the change. Um, since we're coming up to the top of the hour, there are some other questions um, that, frankly, I, I think will be answered in. For those of you who are participating, please follow up with the survey afterwards because we have a fantastic handout that Jeff and I have been working on so that it, it goes into more of the details of some of the concepts that we've had. So if you want that handout, which trust me, it's a good one, um, you're going to want to click on the um, submit after you give us a survey of what you felt about this webinar. I also want to do a shout out because we'll be showing how Landmark and one of our new products that also is based on the optimization that Jeff just spoke to called XG Game Plan at IBC. So for questions around landmark and inventory optimization, please stop by the stand. In fact, there we are. Look at how handsome and, and lovely we were last year at IBC uh, yeah. talking about this. Yes. <laughs> but, and, and Jeff generally is around IBC too. Um, and as I'm sure the entire audience knows, neither Jeff nor I like to talk about this. No, we don't. We hate it, Sarah. We hate it. It's total sarcasm. Um, we are very passionate about this, and so I'm confident that additional questions can be answered through not only stopping by the booth, but we also will have a master class uh, led by the director of product who built a lot of this stuff with you, Jeff Graham Heap, at the show. And then as a follow-up, we will have that handout available to folks. Um, so please definitely take the survey at the end of it. All right, one last question for you as we wrap up. You ready okay. for this one? Yes. Okay. If you could have changed one thing about inventory optimization, what would it have been? Oh, wow. Um, uh, actually, um, the ability to make, I think, the ability to make, to make a change late, very late. Mm. One of the things, one of the things we're, we're kind of, we're kind of looking at is in, in a new, 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 new world, do we think we can get, um, um, uh, hourly ratings could we get ratings by hour um, delivered to the system that can um, that can do it over and over and over you know so you can optimize almost um, uh, two or three minutes before you do a little bit like a lot of people might be shouting well that's called an ad server well yes um, but at the moment ad, ad serving to all linear t televisions in the next five years probably is a little bit is probably a little bit off the off the off the plan yet, but you know, doing things. Can I do things quicker? And can I do it same? And that's where you know, this is why you probably kind of led me into it, Sarah. That, that we've been talking about with XG is that if we can just you know, the washing machine does it the day before. You know, could we do it? Could we do it the hour before? Could we do it? To, could we do it again and again and again and again? 
you know, because if you iterate once, the natural chaos of the system potentially might come up with a better answer if you did it a different way. And so the, if, you, if we can use the power of the cloud um, and the power of the autobook engine to get us, you know, 25 different versions of booking 3 million spots and then picking the right, the, the, the right one, that seems to me that um, uh, it's the way to go. So that's a, a bit of a regret that we never had, we've never quite had the time and the power to apply the system as regularly as we wish. So if we could do that in the future, that would be great. How about that? Well, I, 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 I'm shocked. I thought you were actually going to say nothing because you're perfect. Um, but, but that was uh, in incredibly humble of you to say we, we missed something, but I think that that sets up maybe the next webinar. How do we handle inventory optimization in a real streaming environment and, and a, against the audience targeting, which would be a fantastic follow-up? Um, you game to do that with me sometime in the future? Absolutely, Sarah. I'm up for it. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Um, and thank you to everyone for participating in realizing new ad revenue. We hope to see as many of you at IBC as possible. And with that, Don, I think we are over and out.